basically blocks the words. Complex ideas. One, made by the mind out of simple ones. We have hitherto considered those ideas in the reception whereof the mind is only passive, which are those simple ones received from sensation and reflection before mentioned, whereof the mind cannot make one to itself, nor have any idea which does not wholly consist of them. But, as the mind is wholly passive in the reception of all its simple ideas, so it exerts several acts of its own, whereby out of its simple ideas, as the materials and foundations of the rest, the others are framed. As simple ideas are observed to exist in several combinations united together, so the mind has a power to consider several of them united together as one idea, and that not only as they are united in external objects, but as itself has joined them. Ideas thus made up of several simple ones put together, I call complex, such as our beauty, gratitude, a man, an army, the universe, which, though complicated of various simple ideas, or complex ideas made up of simple ones, yet are when the mind pleases, consider each by itself as one entire thing, and signify it by one name. Two, complex ideas made voluntarily. In this faculty of repeating and joining together its ideas, the mind has great power in varying and multiplying the objects of its thoughts infinitely beyond what sensation or reflection furnished it with, but all this still confined to those simple ideas which it received from those two sources, and which are the ultimate materials of all its compositions. For simple ideas are all from things themselves, and of those, and of these, the simple ideas are all, sorry, for simple ideas are all from things themselves, and of these, the mind can have no more nor other than what are suggested to it. It can have no other ideas of sensible qualities than what come from without, by the senses, nor any ideas of other kind of operations of a thinking substance than what it finds in itself. But when it has once got these simple ideas, it is not confined barely to observation, and what offers itself from without, it can, by its own power, put together those ideas it has and make new complex ones, which it never received so united. Three, complex ideas are, neither, are either modes, substances, or relations. Complex ideas, however compounded and decompounded, though their number be infinite, and the variety endless wherewith they fill and entertain the thoughts of man, yet I think they may be all reduced under these three heads. One, modes, two, substances, and three, relations. Four, complex ideas as modes. First, modes. I call such complex ideas, which, however compounded, contain not in them the supposition of subsisting by themselves, but are considered as dependencies on or affections of substances, such as, such are the ideas signified by the words triangle, gratitude, murder, etc. And if in this I use the word mode in somewhat a different sense from its ordinary signification, I beg pardon. It being unavoidable in discourses deflecting from the ordinary received notions, either to make new words or to use old words in somewhat a new signification, the latter whereof, in our, person, in our present case, is perhaps the more tolerable of the two. Five. 
complex ideas in simple and mixed modes. Of these modes, there are two which are only variations or different combinations of the same simple idea without the mixture of any other, as a dozen or score, which are nothing but the ideas of so many distinct units added together, and these are called simple modes, as being contained within the bounds of one simple idea. Secondly, there are others compounded of simple ideas of several kinds, put together to make one complex one, for example, beauty, consisting of a certain composition of color and figure, causing delight in the beholder, theft, which being the concealed change of the possession of anything without the consent of the proprietor, contains, as, it, as is visible, a combination of several ideas of several kinds, and these I call mixed modes. Six, complex ideas, substances, single to, single or collective, substances, single or collective. Second, the ideas, substances, are such combinations of simple ideas as are taken in to represent distinct particular things subsisting by themselves in which the supposed or confused idea of substance, such as in uh, uh, sorry. Uh, substances single or collective. Secondly, the ideas of substances are such combinations of simple ideas as are taken to represent distinct particular things subsisting by themselves, in which the supposed or confused idea of substance such as it is, is always the first and chief. Thus, if to substance be joined the simple idea of a certain dull, whitish color, with certain degrees of weight, hardness, ductility, and fusibility, we have the idea of lead. And the combination of the ideas of a certain sort of figure with the powers of motion, thought, and reasoning joined to substance make the ordinary idea of a man. Now, of substances also, there are two sorts of ideas. One of single, single substances, as they exist separately, as of a man or a sheep. The other of several of these put together as, in, as an army of men or a flock of sheep, which each of them, one single idea as that of man, which, which collective ideas of several substances thus put together are as much each of them one single idea is that of a man or a unit. Seven, complex ideas of relation. Thirdly, the last sort of complex ideas is that we call relation, which consists in the consideration of comparing one idea with another. Of these several kinds, we shall treat in their order. Eight, the abstrusest idea from the two sources. If we will trace the progress of our minds and with attention observe how it repeats, adds together, and unites its simple ideas received from sensation or reflection, it will lead us thus further than at first perhaps we should have imagined. And I believe we shall find, if we warily observe the originals of our notions, that even the most abstruse ideas, how remote soever they may seem from sense, from any operation of our own minds are yet only such as understanding frames to itself by repeating and joining together ideas that it had either from objects of sense or from its own operations about them, so that those even large and abstract ideas are derived from sensation or reflection being no other than what the mind, by the ordinary use of its own faculties, employed about ideas received from objects of sense or from the operations it observes it's in itself about them, may and does attain unto. Chapter 8 of simple modes and first of the simple modes of space. 1. Simple modes. Though in the foregoing part I have often mentioned simple ideas which are truly the materials of 
all our knowledge, yet having treated of them there rather in the way that they come into the mind, and as distinguished from others more complicated, it will not perhaps be a, be a mess to take a view of some of them again under this consideration and examine those different modifications of the same idea which the mind either finds in things existing or is able to make within itself without the help of any extrinsical object or any foreign suggestion. Those modifications of any one simple idea, which as has been said I call simple modes, are as perfectly different and distinct ideas in the mind as those of the greatest distance or contrariety. For the idea of two is as distinct from that of one as blueness from heat, or either of them from any number, and yet it is made up of only of that simple idea of an unit repeated. And repetitions of this kind joined together make those distinct, simple modes of a dozen, a gross, a million. Two, the idea of space. I shall begin with the simple idea of space. I have showed above, in chapter four, that we get the idea of space both by our sight and touch which I think is so evident that it would be as needless to go to prove that men perceive by their sight a distance between bodies of different colors, or between the parts of the same body, as that they are um, <laughs> colors themselves. Nor is it less obvious that they can do so in the dark by feeling and touch. Three, space and extension. This space, considered barely in length between any two beings, without considering anything else between them, is called distance. If considering in length, breadth, and thickness, I think it may be called capacity. The term extension is usually applied to it in what manner soever considered. Four, immensity. Each different distance is a different modification of space, and each idea of any different distance or space is a simple mode of this idea. Men, for the use and by the custom of measuring, settle in their minds the ideas of certain stated lengths, such as are an inch, foot, yard, fathom, mile, diameter of the earth, etc., which are so many distinct ideas made up of only of space. When any such stated lengths or measures of space are made familiar to men's thoughts, they can, in their minds, repeat them as often as they will, without mixing or joining to them the idea of body or anything else, and frame to themselves the ideas of long, square, or cubic feet, yards, or atom, fathoms, here amongst the bodies of the universe, or else beyond the utmost bound of all bodies, and by adding these still one to another, enlarge their idea of space as much as they please. This power of repeating or doubling say, any idea we have of any distance and adding it to the former as often as we will, without being ever able to come to any stop or stint, let us enlarge it as much as we will, is that which gives us the idea of immensity. Five, figure. There is another modification of this idea, which is nothing but the relation which the parts of the termination of extension or circumscribed space have amongst themselves. This is this the touch discovers in sensible bodies whose extremities come within our reach and the eye takes both from bodies and colors whose boundaries are within its view, where, observing how the extremities differentiate, where, observing how the extremities terminate either in straight lines, which meet at discernible angles, or in crooked lines, wherein no angles can be perceived, by considering these as they relate to one another in all parts of the extremities of any body or space, it has that idea we call figure, which affords to the mind infinite variety. For 
besides the vast number of different figures that do really exist in the coherent masses of matter, the stuck that do really exist in its power by varying the length, the idea of space, and thereby making still new compositions by repeating its own ideas and joining them as it pleases, is perfectly inexhaustible, and so it can multiply figures in infinitum. Seven, place. Another idea coming under this head and belonging to this tribe is what we call place. As in simple space, we consider the relation of distance between any two bodies or pan, uh, points. So in our idea of place, we consider the relation of distance betwixt anything and any two or more points, which are considered as keeping the same distance one with another, and so considered as at rest. But when we find anything at the same distance now, which it was yesterday, and any two or more points, which have not since changed their distance one with another, and with which we, we then compared it, we say it hath kept the same place. But if it hath sensibly altered its distance from either of those points, we say it hath changed its place, place. Though vulgarly speaking, in the common notion of place, we do not always exactly observe the distance from precise points but from large portions of sensible objects to which we consider the thing placed to bear relation and objects to which we consider the thing placed to bear, to, to bear relation and in its distance. At the beginning of that sentence, way back there. Now, as in simple space, we describe, we consider the relation of distance between any two bodies or points. So in our idea of place, we consider the relation of distance betwixt anything and any two or more points which are considered as at rest, as keeping the same distance one with another, and so considered as at rest. For when we find anything at the same distance now, which it was yesterday from any two or more points, which have not since changed their distance from one with another, and with which we then compared it, we say it hath kept the same place, but if it hath sensibly altered its distance with either of those points, we say it hath changed its place, though vulgarly speaking, speaking in the common notion of place, we do not always exactly observe the distance from precise points, but from large portions of sensible objects to which we consider the thing place to bear relation, and its distance from which we have some reason to observe. That our idea of place is nothing else but such a relative position of anything as I have before mentioned, I think, is plain, and will be easily admitted when we consider that we can have no idea of the place of the universe, though we can of all the parts of it, because beyond that we have not the idea of any fixed, distinct, particular beings in reference to which we can imagine it to have any relation of distance but all beyond it is one uniform space or expansion wherein the mind finds no variety, no marks. For to say that the world is somewhere means no more than that it does exist. This, though a phrase but borrowed from place, signifying only its existence, not location, and one one can find out and frame in his mind clearly and distinctly the place of the universe he will be able to tell us whether it moves or stands still in the undistinguishable in, in name of infinite space. Though it be true that the word place has sometimes a more confused sense and stands for that space which anybody takes up. And so the universe is in a place. The idea, therefore, of place, we have by the same means that we get the idea of space whereof this is but a particular limit of consideration, viz. by our sight and touch, by either of which we receive into our minds the ideas of extension or distance. Eleven. <clears throat> extension and body are not the same. There are some that would persuade us that body and extension are the same thing, 
If they mean by body and extension the same that other people do, is by body something that is solid and extended, whose parts are separable and movable in different ways, and by extension only the space that lies between the extremities of those solid coherent parts, and which is possessed by them, they confound very different ideas one with another. For I appeal to every man's own thoughts, whether the idea of space be not as distinct from that of solidity as it is from the idea of scarlet color. It is true, solidity cannot exist without extension, neither can scarlet color exist without extension, but this hinders not but that they are distinct ideas. Many ideas require others as necessary to their existence or conception, which yet are very distinct ideas. Motion can neither be nor be conceived without space, and yet motion is not space, nor space motion. Space can exist without it, and they are very distinct ideas. And so I think of those of space and solidity. Solidity is so inseparable an idea from body that upon that depends its filling of space, its contact, impulse, and communication of motion.
complex ideas. One, made by the mind of simple ones. We have hitherto considered those ideas in the reception whereof the mind is only passive, which are those simple ones received from sensation and reflection before mentioned, whereof the mind cannot make one to itself, nor have any idea which does not wholly consist of them. But, as the mind is wholly passive in the reception of all its simple ideas, so it exerts several acts of its own, whereby, out of its simple ideas, as the materials and foundations of rest, the others are framed. As simple ideas are observed to exist in several combinations united together, so the mind has a power to consider several of them united together as one idea, and that not only as they are united in external objects, but as itself has joined them. Ideas thus made up of several simple ones put together I call complex, such as our beauty, gratitude, a man, an army, the universe, which, though complicated of various simple ideas, complex ideas made up of simple ones, yet are the mind pleases considered each by itself as one entire thing and signified by one name. Two, complex ideas made voluntarily. In this faculty of repeating and joining together its ideas, the mind has great power in varying and multiplying the objects of its thoughts infinitely beyond what sensation or reflection furnished it with. But all this still confined to those simple ideas which it received from those two sources, and which are the ultimate materials of all its compositions. For simple ideas are all from things themselves, and of those, and of these, the simple ideas are all, sorry. For simple ideas are all from things themselves, and of these, the mind can have no more nor other than what are suggested to it. It can have no other ideas of sensible qualities than what come from without, by the senses, nor any ideas of other kind of operations of a thinking substance than what it finds in itself. But when it has once got these simple ideas, it is not confined barely to observation, and what offers itself from without, it can, by its own power, put together those ideas it has and make new complex ones, which it never received so united. Three, complex ideas are, neither, are either modes, substances, or relations. Complex ideas, however compounded and decompounded, though their number be infinite, and the variety endless wherewith they fill and entertain the thoughts of man, yet I think they may be all reduced under these